Welcome back to another video today we'll be listening to part 3 of what if Issei was almost killed by Rias Grimori don't forget to like share and subscribe for more now let's begin. Chapter 11. Cornflakes Guy. Scene, Yasaka Castle. Huh, what the, oh, ya, Yasaka-san, hello. Issei is now facing the fox Yukai as the color returned to his cheeks in the form of a rosy blush. Yusaka smiles sadly, Issei notices wet streaks as he examines the golden eyes of Yusaka who is now widening her eyes at the boy's stare. Frowning a bit, Issei speaks, Yusaka-sama, were you crying? Who made you sad? I promise, I will make that person regret it. Issei begins to look around the room while unconsciously holding the fox queen in an embrace of his own. One of the boy's arms are around one of the shoulders of the woman as her face was buried in Issei's chest. Scanning the room, passing a puzzled looking Kuroka, Issei then shakes his head in frustration. Well, who was it? Then reality hits the Red Dragon Emperor like a ton of bricks. Realizing what he is doing, Issei slowly turns his head downward. What the hell did I just do? Um, well, this can end in two different ways, finally seeing a pair of golden eyes looking back up at him, Yusaka looks to be in second heaven. Tilting his head a bit, Issei struggles to determine if what he is seeing is either real, or an hallucination. The Fox Queen, Yusaka of Kyoto, head of the Yukai faction, was now blushing and smiling while giggling frantically. Foo 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 foo. She was doing immature things such as motorboating Issei's chest while making raspberry sounds. The woman was also smelling the teen's bare chest skin with intensity as she pulled his yukata apart. As soon as Issei attempted to release the yukai, nine separate tails managed to wrap themselves around Issei which immediately held him in place. P, please, ma'am, this is all too forward for a poor hormone-driven teenager. The fox yukai shows an evil grin. Issei's position is now changed, forcefully into a reverse spooning position with him being the little spoon. As the teen's face begins to submerge into the cleavage of no escape, Yusaka excitedly speaks up. Foo 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 foo, it's your turn my darling. A few feet away, Kuroka was watching the scene play out. Well, this woman has clearly been alone for far too long. Oh wait, the moon cycle, that's it. She is indeed a Yukai fox demon after all, nine tail or not. I see now. Well, I can't blame her at this point. Kuroka then changes her train of thought. I still need to let Valley and Ophis know that I am resigning. Well, I suppose the two of them should be alright together if I leave them alone. Oh, geese, listen to me, acting as if Yusaka would go overboard or something. Impossible, she is far too traditional and composed for me to think anything otherwise, well that would be, watching Issei attempting to struggle from a multitude of golden tails while Yusaka was laughing like a mad woman, maybe I should wait a night, just in case. We begin to pan out from the room with the following, oh Issei, foo 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 foo, don't let go of me, this is so much fun. Ya, yeah, Yusaka-chan, Erm, Sama, San, please, this is just too much. Hey, you two, do you know where I can find some popcorn, this is quite entertaining, NYA. Yusaka looks back over her shoulder at a smirking Nekomata. The fox stretches her arms while Issei is still held in place, Ada Ada, I suppose it's late, how about a sleepover, Kuroka? Hearing this, Issei's eyes widen in horror as his face is completely engulfed in pale, warm and giggly flesh. S, S, sleep. How will that even be possible at this point? Scene, dry. Kellogg's insane asylum for the criminally insane, underworld. In a large office, which had early 20th century gadgetry all over the place, we can see a man, wearing a lab coat of sorts. He wasn't particularly handsome to any sort of degree. Short and unremarkable, the older man had a very old-fashioned grooming, which showed classic facial hair design and late 19th century loop style eyeglasses, which made his eyeballs look larger than they actually were. The man even sported a pair of large buck teeth which seemed to impact his overly drawn-out speech. Clearly the woman is suffering from a multitude of ailments in which we will indeed cure her. Emphasizing his, ours, as the man continues to speak, he begins to look at a patient folder attached to a clipboard. Yes, yes, I recommend at least 12 pounds of yogurt on a daily basis. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the large desk, we can see no other than Rias Gramori. She is wearing a patient garb and she appears to be rather enraged. 
12 pounds of yogurt. That is ridiculous. I couldn't possibly eat a pound, let alone 12. The doctor adjusts his glasses as he flips a page in the patient folder. Oh, my dear, it isn't going down that end, Rias gasps. Scene 8 hours later at Yasaka Castle. Hearing a song that sounded very familiar, Issei began to stir from his deep sleep. Not opening his eyes, Issei can hear a very excited Kuno speaking. I never skip the openings, besides, I just love this theme. Shish, quiet my dear, our little opai dragon is still sleeping, I know you're excited, but try and compose yourself, my little princess. Okay, I can hush a bit. Meanwhile, Issei can hear the lyrics to this song. Opai Daisuki Doragon Koyo Shida, Suiki Haim no Opai, Wa Tatamo Sateki Da, Doragon Doragon Opai Doragon, Momi Momi Pochido Boin Boin, Takusan Opai Uru Kerido, Yupara Suiki Haim Ga Daisuki, remembering the good times he had with his sensei and occasionally Seraphal when they were filming this series, Issei thinks to himself. I miss those guys, I wonder if they are doing well. Issei is brought out of his thoughts when the television, that the two girls were presumably watching, stopped playing the series and a loud beep was heard. Opening his eyes, Issei realizes that he has been sleeping on Yasaka's lap, but that was only a momentary thought as the special news broadcast began. Rising immediately, which shocked Yasaka, Issei had his attention on the television. Kunuo complained immediately, I hate interruptions. Issei instinctively placed his hand on the head of the little fox child as she turned around with a smile. With Issei's other hand, he made a shush symbol with his index finger across his smiling lips. Attention, attention, we have a breaking report and update regarding the upcoming raiding game. All three people in the room look at the screen. Before we begin our report on the exciting matchup involving the Bales and Grimori, we must make an emergency announcement. The screen now shows a picture of Issei. The Red Dragon Emperor, the Opai Dragon, Issei Hyodo, Han of Rias Grimori, is missing. He has been missing for over 24 hours. If anyone has any information on the whereabouts of Howidu Issei, please come forward as you will be handsomely rewarded. This is a direct order from Mao Sorch's Lucifer herself. The screen changes back to the female newscaster who looks to be an Oni demon with red skin. Considering the dire situation, the upcoming raiding game will be cancelled, indefinitely, that is until circumstances present themselves accordingly. This is yet another order from your Mao. We will continue to update all of you as information comes in. Thank you for your time and for paying attention to this very special emergency broadcast. All contact information will be posted below. Thank you and good morning. Chapter 12. Ophis. Scene, Yasaka Castle. Issei slowly turns his head toward a nervously smiling Yasaka. She begins to blush. Yasaka-sama, with all due respect, you have some explaining to do. Yasaka turns her smile into a frown as she looks down. Issei, as I told you earlier, I did some bad things, things that I am not proud of. Well, maybe I took you without anyone knowing. More so, I apprehended you while you were under the watchful eyes of Sirzex herself so I am sure that struck a chord with her. But I only did it because I didn't think they would find a way to save you in time. So, you see, I am a bad person, I understand if you, Yasaka is shocked out of her speech as she feels Issei wrap both of his arms around her. The fox looks up with widened eyes as Issei has his face buried in the side of her neck. T, T, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yasaka places a hand on the back of Issei's head as she begins to smile sadly. Thank you for not telling anyone. I don't want to see her, I don't want to. As far as Sirzex, I am sure she is disappointed in me for abandoning everyone like that, but I just can't. It, it, it still, it hurts. Just like the other time, when I was, ah, it hurts. I am sorry for lashing out at you like that, it's just so much has happened in such a short time. Kuno. Yasaka, thank you, both. There is no other place in the world I'd rather be right now. So, thank you. At the last sentence, Issei begins to break down in tears. Yasaka tightens her hold as Issei does the same. Kunuo is looking at the couple with watery eyes. So, it was that Rias president lady, she did something to Papa, that is not okay, bad devil, bad, bad devil. In the room adjacent, we can see Kuroka sitting on a toga mat. She is speaking into a black-colored communication circle. 
The sigil on the magical item looked to be that of a snake, eating its own tail. So, that's really all I wanted to say about it. You aren't disappointed in me, are you? Kuroka waits for a reply as she begins to look at her fingernails in boredom. The black circle pulses and then a cold and childish female voice responds. I dot C. That is regrettable. Hyodo, that was the entity in which you speak. Perhaps you are speaking of the security that has the same name. Kuroka looks from her fingernails, now toward the circle while yawning. Yeah Afi, what of it? The black circle begins to grow. This causes Kuroka to back up while standing. After a few moments, the circle was large enough for a small person to walk through and sure enough, somebody did. Wearing a gothic lolita dress and headpiece, we see the ever-elusive Ouroboros dragon in her little girl form. Taking a breath or two, the Nekomata smirks. Ophis, seriously, that was random as hell. You can't be that pissed at me for leaving. The little girl tilts her head as her gray eyes focus on the cat woman. Moving a very long and black strand of hair from her face, the now known, Ophis speaks up. Show me to, Hyodo. Show me to the Sekiruti. Flustered at first, Kuroka begins to shake her head no. First, shish. Second, no can do. If Yasaka finds out that you're here, well, that would just be very bad. Ophis tilts her head the other way. I can feel, feel, the Red Dragon Emperor, he is close. If you won't show me where he is, then, then I will find him. Kuroka begins to panic as she has both of her arms outstretched. Wait, 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 okay, fine, you want Issei. I will make that happen, but you must calm down, please, Ophis. The little girl simply places both of her hands on her hips. This, better be good, Nako. Scene, Grimori Estate, The Underworld. We see a large table with an arrangement of high-class officials sitting in large chairs. From one end to the other we can see Sirzex, Graphia, Seraphal, Michael, Gabriel, Azazel and Penemu. Rating games be damned, we need to find Issei. Sirzex seems to have slammed both of her hands on the large table in anger. Responding, Azazel speaks up. I agree with you, I really do, but... I may have a solution that could act like two birds being hit with one stone. Sirzex nods, continue. Nodding back, Azazel lights a cigarette as he begins his explanation. Well, we may have an opportunity to both find Issei and keep the masses entertained at the same time. They will completely forget about any rating games after they watch what we are going to present. Sirzex seems to lighten up a bit as a small smile can be seen. We will broadcast a live Opai Dragon Hunt. We can make it an event in itself. Teams can register and begin their searches. Camera crew can follow these teams and report live data. That, along with interviews from some of the major pantheons that Issei has impacted, I think that would be a productive way in looking at this situation. Azazel sits back down. Seraphal jumps up. Yeah. I love it. Great idea. Michael looks at Gabriel. I suppose you could enter too, if you like. Gabriel, the blonde female who is very well endowed cracks her knuckles and looks back at Michael with a grin. Well, let's say I find Issei, Sirzex, what would be the prize? Maybe I can keep him. Sirzex looks at this Yandere angel with her mouth agape. Chapter 13. The Drag, Scene, Yasaka Castle. Hearing the commotion from the other adjoining room, Kuroka looks at Ophis and places her finger over her mouth, shush. Turning toward the sliding door, Kuroka slowly opens it ever so slightly. Seeing this action, the Ouroboros dragon walks close toward the door while maintaining absolute silence. As we see both women, sitting on the floor next to the sliding door, they begin their eavesdropping. There, there, era era, it's okay Issei. I won't make you see anyone you don't want to see. I promise, you have not a single thing in the entire world to worry about, not anymore. Issei. Please consider this your home and consider Kuno and myself as your new family. How does that sound? At the declaration, the said fox princess jumps up from the couch while producing a childish victory stance as she places both of her hands in the air with peace signs. That's right Issei. Mom is always right. You should listen to her. We love you very much and not just me and mom. I mean, I know so many kids that absolutely worship the Opai dragon. You are my hero, Dragon Boob San. Kuroka is tilting her head at the scene in front of her, this makes her internally giggle. 
Meanwhile, Ophis is perplexed by the exchange of emotions which causes her a bit of inner turmoil. Love, family, I don't know what those are, why does this seem to bother me? Aside from Great Red, nothing bothers me. This is annoying. Both girls are drawn out of their thoughts as Issei raises his head from Yusaka's neck while using both of his hands to wipe his tears away. Thank you Kunuo. Thank you Yusaka. I really am happy to be here and I meant what I said earlier. There is no other place I would rather be right now than here with you. Yusaka smiles warmly and nods. Kuno does the same. Then Issei instantly grabs a hold of his left arm. Gritting his teeth in pain, both Fox Yukai look concerned. It's, it's okay, I think it's just a drag, ugh. The arm in which Issei is holding begins to glow red. Showing no fear, both mother and daughter place individual hands on each of Issei's shoulders in support. Kuroka feels a hand gripping a part of her kimono. Looking over, the Nako sees little Ophis, holding on to one of her sleeves as she watches the scene in front of her with great care. Meanwhile, Issei's gauntlet manifests itself in all of its glory, while glowing red with green glows coming from the emerald jewels. Partner. Get out of the way. She is going to shoot. Partner. Issei is looking at his gauntlet with tears jetting from his eyes. Dedrag, Dedrag, it's okay. Please, don't, it's over, we are fine, we are safe. The gauntlet begins to lose its intense glow. Meanwhile Yusaka and Kunuo both have looks of excitement, sadness and happiness, all at the same time. Partner, Issei, HMMPH, this is strange, I feel strange, you feel strange, what happened? Yusaka places her free hand on Issei's gauntlet, I can explain, Welch Dragon. After a few minutes of explanations from Yusaka and finally Issei toward the end, the dragon went silent. Issei was holding Yusaka's hand while using his free arm to wipe away the tears he created when he recalled the painful events to the drag. That bitch, Yusaka, Kuno and Issei all jump. In the other room, Kuroka also flinched a bit. After I put all of my trust in that devil, what does she do? She throws you away as if you were nothing but a mere servant. And all for what? Not calling her by her fucking name. Issei looks toward Kuno. Dedrag, I know you're pissed, but there is a child in the room you know. The gauntlet goes silent again. Kuno begins to giggle. I think he wants to beat up Rius more than I do. Then Dedrag replies. Yeah kid, sorry for the language, but that woman really ruffles my scales to no end. Deciding that hiding was beneath one of the most powerful entities in existence, Ophis stands up while maintaining her hold on Kuroka's sleeve. Widening her eyes, Kuroka attempts to convey her disapproval while shaking her head no. All four inhabitants of the large room now hear the sliding door slam open. As Yusaka, Kuno and Issei turn their heads, Kuroka decides that being dragged on the ground would not look very distinguished and stands up. At the entrance, we can see the Nekomata, holding hands with a little girl with long black hair. Issei widens his eyes in horror once he realizes who this person is. Issei and Dedrag yell in unison. Ophis. The Lolita girl shows no emotion as she stares directly back into Issei's eyes. Meanwhile, Kuroka forcefully removes her hand from Ophis's grip while checking her nails to make sure she didn't break one. Yasaka stands and walks in front of Issei while facing Ophis. She has a very serious look as her stance suggested a warning of pain for those who dare to make another step. Ophis begins to smile. There you are, Hyodo Issei. Chapter 14. Sensei. Scene, Yusaka Castle. The great and powerful fox Yukai had all of her tails outstretched which now blocked Issei's view of Ophis. The black-haired Lolita turns her gaze toward Yusaka as her smile reverts into a stoic look. How dare you enter into my domain without permission? All nine fox tails now emit blue flames from the tips as Yusaka eyes begin to glow with the same color. This makes Ophis smirk as she closes her eyes. Then, in a black flash, Ophis vanishes from her spot. Growling with a fox-like animalism, Yusaka begins to look around, which causes her large tails to flutter. Issei managed to duck away from one of the fiery tails while hearing the volume of the television increase. Yusaka was also keen to this change in atmosphere and turned her gaze accordingly. Issei did the same, looking toward the television, as the Opai Dragon TV show continued on with a sing-along, Ophis was now sitting on the ground, not two feet from the television with her head tilted toward the right. 
She was facing the screen while pointing a finger at the Opai Dragon character. Kunuo, who was hiding under Issei's arm, now saw another kid, who was interested in her favorite show. Giggling, Kunuo immediately leapt from Issei's safety, now toward her new best friend. Both Yasaka and Issei's eyes widened as Kuno sat right next to Ophis while pointing at the character on the screen just like the lowly was. Yep, he's the best. He is. Opai Dragon and nobody can hurt him. You haven't seen this before, have you? Ophis turns her head and looks directly at the little fox girl, who has a bright smile on her face. Yasaka gasps and is about to say something as her foxfire flickers a bit. Meanwhile Issei gets a personal communication from Dedrag. Partner, I have been asleep for a while, but, I think it was the Ouroboros dragon, I think it was responsible for waking me. As you are no longer a devil, it probably would have taken me some time to communicate with you, weeks, maybe months. But, it seems that one, the oldest of our kind, decided to intervene. Issei nods while watching the interaction between Kunuo and Ophis. I don't know what this is. Fox child, explain this to me. I must understand. Giggling, Kunuo grabs the hand of Ophis and shakes it in a very exaggerated handshake gesture. You can count on me, I, your sensei, Kunuo, will educate you in the ways of the Opai dragon. Kunuo has a determined look as she smiles victoriously. Ophis on the other hand, thinking for a moment in all seriousness, the black-haired girl simply nods while maintaining her stoicism. Yay, it's settled then. Mom, this pretty little girl is my new best friend, K. Ophis tilts her head at Kunuo while pointing to herself. Immediately extinguishing her fox fire, the defeated-looking mother shows off a forced smile. Honey, this is not a little girl, she is, Issei interrupts. Ophis. The black-haired lowly turns her head and stares directly into the boy's eyes. Keeping a straight face, Issei speaks. I am not interested in fighting Valley or joining the Chaos Brigade. Ophis simply nods. She then turns her head back toward the TV. Feeling annoyed, Issei looks at Yusaka as she sits down next to Issei. Yusaka smiles nervously, let me try this time. Issei nods in frustration, Ophis san. Again, Ophis turns her head and looks at Yusaka. Why are you here? Ophis then looks past Yusaka and over toward Kuroka, who is still standing near the entrance. Yusaka trains her eyes in that direction as does Issei. Kuroka, Noticing that all eyes were on her, simply smiles malevolently, NYA. Oh, well, see, it's not my fault. She just crawled out of a communication circle. It was creepy, like something from that movie, The Ring. Also, since when can you use a communication circle like that? Like, who just crawls out of those things? Is it even possible? Yusaka and Issei both roll their eyes. Ophis turns around and continues to watch the television show as Kunuo starts to sing the Opai Dragon song. Scene, Drive, Kellogg's Insane Asylum, Underworld. On what looks to be an exercise bicycle, we can see Rias as she is pedaling away. She has a plethora of tubes and wires attached to her along with a breathing apparatus. Nothing in this room was modern. If anything this room held nothing but technologies that should be otherwise, be in a museum. As Rias is breathing heavily, we can see no other than Dr. Kellogg. He is pressing a few buttons and turning a few dials, don't you worry little princess, I am an expert in my field and I can assure you that I will cure you. Rias attempts to reply, however her breathing mask prevents her. Laughing to himself, drive. Kellogg continues, yes, yes, I am sure that you feel as though you simply are incurable. Well, my dear, I am here to prove otherwise. Let me tell you something. Good bowels are the pinnacle of good health. After that, a strict diet, free of the flesh of animals, will aid in the cleansing of those humorous bowels of yours. Once the humors are expelled, we can then begin the next level of your treatment. Oh, right, look at the time. Nurse, it's time for patient Ramori's yogurt treatment. Rias shakes her head no as she attempts to gasp. Chapter 15. Oh Pai, Scene, Yasaka Castle. A short while later, we can see Yusaka and Issei, cuddling together on the couch as Issei is sipping a cup of coffee while scratching his head. Meanwhile, Kuroka is sitting on the other side of Issei while drinking sake out of a bowl. She seems to be leaning against the boy as he seems oblivious. Staring at the television screen, Issei continues to reminisce about past moments while recording the program. 
Ophis and Kunuo are still sitting on the ground, directly in front of the TV as the little fox continues to explain the premise of the episode. Feeling a tighter grip on his arm, Issei looks toward his left to see Yusaka blushing. Trying to not blush himself, Issei smiles and nods. Yes, Yusaka-sama, responding with a wink, the blonde woman speaks in a soft yet seductive tone. It's almost as if you are spending an early morning with your family, isn't it? Not able to contain a blush any longer, Issei's smile turns nervous. Ya, yeah, Yusaka-san, erm, well, yeah. Attempting to look back at the television screen, Issei's eyes are met with a pair of little golden and little gray eyes. Widening his eyes in surprise, Issei flinches. Ophis immediately points at Issei. This causes the teen to flinch yet again. Oh, Ophis. The black-haired lolicon stands up while Kuno has a puzzled look. Having the slightest of smirks, Ophis speaks. I understand now. Yes, it makes perfect sense now. This is not a problem. The entire room tilted their heads in bewilderment. Ophis now looks at Yusaka. She then turns her gaze down toward her chest. Ophis nods. She then turns her gaze toward Kuroka and then her chest. Again, Ophis nods. As the ending credits are playing on the television, the word, Opai, continues to repeat itself. Ophis then points at the TV and nods again. Yes, I understand now. Very well. Kunuo replies, you do. Ophis looks down at the little fox, you should move, sensei. Nodding and smiling, the little blonde girl jumps up and skips off toward Issei. Nodding, Ophis looks down toward the floor as her body is completely engulfed by an infinite amount of black and outstretched arms with hands attached. After a quick purple flash, a pillar of black smoke was left over. Kuno sits in between her mother and Issei while watching the magic show. As the smoke clears, a silhouette of a woman can be seen. Just from the outline, this female was clearly endowed in all of the right places. Tall and slim with amazing hips not to mention that rack. You could compare this body to that of Yusaka and Kuroka, but taller. Everyone in the room has their eyes wide and their jaws agape. As if the smoke wasn't there in the first place, we can now see a much bigger version of Ophis. She is still wearing her gothic lolita outfit however, the exposed parts of her breasts that only had cross-like bandages on the nipples, were replaced. Now on each boob, we can see a silver nipple armor of sorts. Each armor is adorned in the symbol of the Ouroboros. Essentially we are looking at two snakes that are devouring their own tails, for reference. Pulling another large black strand of hair from her gray eyes, Ophis speaks. In a deeper feminine voice, I understand now. As I said, not a problem. Kunuo was the first to say something. No, not fair. You're supposed to be my little best friend. I am older than you, you're supposed to be my minion. Now, well now you look like that old lady, Kuroka. Forming a tick mark, the Nako responds, I do not look old. I am in my prime and I am very fertile. Issei. Gaining a nervous smile, Issei looks away from Ophis to now Kuroka. Not being able to help it, Issei beings to giggle. I'm insane, that's it. This is what going crazy must feel like, haha. The drag interrupts Issei's thoughts. Welcome to my world, partner. I would say that I feel sorry for you, but then again, I forget, what is the name that everyone calls me nowadays? Oh, that's right boob dragon now you get to suffer the insanity i had to endure all these years ha 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 shaking his head in annoyance issei relays his thoughts stupid lazy dragon it's not my fault that you don't enjoy the finer things in life scene grimori mansion sears x is laying in her large bed while cuddling with her wife grafia the large projector screen is playing reruns of the opi dragon series Sears X is sitting upward with her back against the headboard as Grafia has her head on the redhead's large chest. Oh Grafia, I fear that we may never see him again. I know it's an irrational fear but I can't help but think of a few what ifs. Grafia nods, I know, I know, I sometimes think the same thing. Personally, I wish we could have spent more time with Issei. Sears X replies, yeah and the sad thing is, we could have. But we were so concerned about what my sister would think. Grafia hugs her wife tighter. It's going to be alright, I have this feeling. Even if we are unable to track him, I am sure that this event that Azazel-sama has planned, well, I think that it will have results. 
Gabriel herself was interested in finding the boy. Powerful existences such as hers, just imagine the possibilities. Graphia then scowls. Sears X replies, yeah, that's all good and all, however, the angel's price is far too high for my liking. Graphia is nodding with a scowl, almost forgot about that part. Thanks for watching like share and subscribe for the next parts one got in my storage.